success or failure one is your desire to actually do it and then two the commitment that it will take to achieve it stop being scared go and do it so those dreams that you have those goals that you have don't put them off another second not one not one second uh What's up, everybody? Welcome to Ramble for Radio. I am your host, Genty. That's right. Twitter and Instagram at Genty523. We are getting started. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Commit. Go do it. You have a dream. Do not put it off for a second. Go do it. Oh, tough week this week for me, uh, like many weeks, but I made it to talk to you. That's right. I've been waiting to talk to you, all 11 of you listening to my show. Man, I've got these crazy dreams that I want to take care of. And recently at work, I had a situation that fucked me up so bad that I couldn't sleep the next day. And you know me with sleep. We're already not the best of friends right now. (laughs) I finally had a coworker tell me, you got to do something. Everybody's been telling me to do something, but really said, you need to do something. You need to go out and follow your dreams because you're going to die. You're going to die. And I was like, oh, fuck. She's right. I'm going to die. I better follow my dreams like right now or else I'm going to fucking die. I'm either going to die behind the wheel or I fell asleep in the sauna again. This time standing up. It's 200 degrees in there and I fell a fucking sleep. Or maybe I'll drown in my bathtub. That's right. I fell asleep in my bathtub that I can't even fit in. Not because I'm fat, you bastards. Not because I'm Auntie Patty McFatty. But apparently, if you're over five foot eight and you have a home that's built in the 70s, they didn't make tubs for five foot eight people back then. So I can only sit in a 90 degree angle in my tub. <laughs> oh, God. So, for whatever reason, I thought it would be a good idea to to throw half of my body out of the tub and just stuff myself, half the other half of my body, into the tub and fell asleep. And before I knew it, the water was at my nose. And I was like, blah, blah. I almost drowned, y'all. I almost fucking drowned in my goddamn bathtub watching The Good Wife, my favorite show. <laughs> <laughs> what a life. Me vida loca. I'm going to die by my own hands, more than likely. <laughs> uh, but the good news is I'm not falling asleep while cooking, so that's an improvement. If you listen to the earlier episodes, I used to fall asleep while cooking, and then shit would just catch on fire. <laughs> but now I don't. I use my George Foreman. And things just burn without really catching on fire on the George. So kudos to the George. But I want to pass on the word from Mr. Tim Kennedy, a great American at Tim Kennedy, um, as well as uh, Jocko Willink, who is the writer of Discipline Equals Freedom, which is on the book list, which I will tell you. I've got some books I'm reading and I want to share with you guys. The most important thing today that I speak to you about would be if you've got a dream, if you've got a goal, go do it. I'm on my weight loss kick and I've reached the breaking point where nothing is happening. Not a pound has been lost. 
I see inches leaving, but of zero pounds, the scale has not moved. I have been told by people that, hey, you look like you're losing weight. I'm like, cool. Well, the scale isn't fucking moving, you dumb cunt. That twat scale in my bathroom isn't moving. So I literally reached a breaking point. I have not quit. This is week three. I am still loving my life despite the fact that I have not lost a single pound. Now, when I have my friend on this cool stuff, he lost 50 pounds in eight weeks. What the fuck? I hate you, my dude. It's so easy for, air quotes, biological men to lose weight versus a biological shitty lady like myself. Um, Especially when you don't have lady plumbing. Fuck. It's even, it's, it's, I'm trying to achieve the impossible. If I go on hormones, I risk, I run the risk of breast cancer. So I said, I don't want breast cancer. Let me try and lose weight on my own. I don't need your steroids. But now I'm contemplating using steroids and cutting my life short just so I could be on Team Skinny Mini. I don't know, guys. What do you think? <laughs> um, no, I love going to the gym. My diet is probably my favorite diet I've ever done before. I get to eat all of the steak and eggs I want twice a day. No sugar, no carbs. I only have carbs every five days. I only have sugar every five days. And I'm cool. Life is good. I thought that I would be craving more food, but I, since I get to eat so much, st- all the steak and eggs I want, I'm never hungry, ever. So I like that. Um, I suggested it to the homie, so he'll probably lose more weight than me. We shall see. But back to the Jocko and the Tim Kennedy. Um, Tim Kennedy, great, at Tim Kennedy, great American that you should follow, as well as at Jocko Willink when you are down and you need a pick-me-up. Discipline equals freedom. Um, Jocko will get you there. Uh, another thing I didn't pull the clip from, but I just wanted to touch on briefly was that, uh, rage. I've got the gay rage as some of you, or some of you may not know. And it takes me some time. I will have episodes where I will just damn near freak the fuck out. Okay. Um, in the past, it has been extremely destructive to myself or things around me, not necessarily people. Very rarely I took it out on people. I count on the number of times on one hand that I've taken that gay rage out on people. Um, They're still alive. They just have a limp. (laughs) Ah! The, The gay rage will strike me every now and then, but for the most part, I am in control. I will have episodes every now and then, but if I can go back and think... The last one that I had was maybe uh, the podcast, maybe in the 20s, maybe the early 10s or the 20s, one of those episodes back there. Um, So I would have to say that that would be last year. Hey, (laughs) I'll take it. A year of, of no gay rage. So that way nothing gets destroyed. Nobody gets hurt. I don't get hurt. I feel good. And not to mention, according to Jocko, people who lose self-control in a physical manner, uh, whether it's uh, fighting or swearing uncontrollably or being super aggressive or tearing other people down, is a description of that person's self-esteem, meaning it's low. I don't want to have low self-esteem, so I'm like, fuck, I need to be in control of my gay rage. So this week, the gay rage almost came. Um, I don't want to lose my job. But this motherfucker, I will not get into too many specifics because I have to engage with this individual. But I will just say that this particular individual came up to me asking me to do something that they already knew how to do but didn't want to do it because they were lazy. And I said, okay, you got me. I'm trying to take on a new approach from Jocko. Don't sweat it. Internalize the feeling. Keep it moving. Never let them see you sweat. 
So I said, okay, despite the fact that I already know that you know how to perform this task and you're simply passing it on to me because you're too lazy to do it. Okay, I see you and I'll go ahead and do it with a smile. The next day, this individual comes up to me again with some stupid shit. Only this time, it's now putting customer service in jeopardy. You know, the thing that gets us a paycheck. You jackass. Hey, Aho, could you stop pretending to be dumb for a second and work? Because we got unhappy customers here, and now you've decided to just piss off. That was strike two, and I I had to ask uh, my fam on the Instagram, is it assault if it's an open hand slap? Because this individual doesn't deserve a closed fist. I want to know, will I go to jail for the open hand slap? Because... (laughs) This person was being a little bitch. They were suffering from the bitch assness. And I just so desperately wanted to smack them out of the bitch assness. I wanted to bring them back to reality and say, look, we've got a job to do. We need to work together as a team to get this accomplished and take care of these customers and what they and what their needs are. Instead of you jogging off, instead of you pissing off, instead of you doing whatever you wanted to do at that moment in time, because it wasn't the allotted time for you to do something. Instead, they just said, oh, you're here. I'm doing what I want now. Man, I was, I was starting to feel the gay rage. And I said to myself, one more time, motherfucker. Come at me with some stupid shit And it's open hand season Smack 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 But I politely I got away from the gay rage And I just said You know what I am going to work over here this individual does not want to work, does not want to help me, does not want to help customers, then I will do it. I will do their job and my job and then some. Because that is my job, to do the job, help people, and get the fuck out of there. Oh, I forgot one part. Collect a check. So I came to my senses. I stopped the gay rage. Whew. It was a tough, it was a tough battle to say the least. So once I regained control of the the gay rage, just like Jocko says, I took the power back from them. I used their stupidity and used it to fuel me to get my job more, get my job done more effectively, more efficiently than I ever thought I could do without the gay rage. So Thank you, Jocko. I encourage you, if you do not already do so, to listen to the Jocko Willink podcast. It may benefit you. Um, He might be a little too rigid for some because he's got that Navy SEAL kind of background and he's very uh, black or white with as far as there's no in between. It's either A is A or B is B. There is no C. Um, You will do this because of this. If you do not do this, then it's fucked. (laughs) So uh, sometimes I like that. Sometimes I feel there's a leeway sometimes. Um, Mr. Jocko does not believe that. So nevertheless, I highly recommend you go and listen to Jocko's podcast. I took my car to the mechanic and I parked my car outside of the mechanic's garage. I always park in the first stall. They know me. I usually leave the car unlocked because they're going in and out of the car, checking various things, fluids, whatever, delivering parts, doing all kinds of stuff with my car. So as a courtesy to them, I normally leave the car unlocked. Now, my mechanic is in the hood. I'm not going to lie to you. It's kind of a rough part of town. But nevertheless, there is a car wash right next to the mechanic's shop and 
there's a bunch of dudes out there washing cars. Everybody's sitting out there watching cars. So I park in my stall. I go inside. I talk to the mechanic for a little bit. And the mechanic shop has 20-foot glass windows in the lobby. Uh, you can see out. Most people cannot see in. It's because they have the windows kind of tinted. And Maria, mi abuelita, Maria abuelita, comes out of nowhere. Maria the nine, Maria grandma, comes out of the, the, the grassy knoll of the hood and starts doing laps around my scion. And we start talking and we go, gosh, that's sure weird that that lady's doing laps around your car. And my car has the limo tent, so it's very difficult to see in if somebody's even inside there, let alone if the car's locked or unlocked. So Abuelita Maria starts peeping in the windows as best she can, doing laps around the car. Then she starts doubling back, looking to see if anybody's watching her doing laps around the car. Then starts to try and find the door that is unlocked. Now, the security feature on my vehicle allows me to either unlock door number one or all of them. So whenever I go, to, whenever I go anywhere, whether it's the mechanic, the gas station, any place that I'm outside of the car but I'm near it, I will leave door number one unlocked, just in case. I never have any of the other doors open unless other people are with me, because I don't want to get fucking carjacked. I live in the hood. Okay? So, as uh, mi abuelita Maria, abuelita Maria, Maria the nan, Maria the grandma. She starts trying on the doors. So the mechanic runs out there and goes, um, ma'am, can I help you? And she goes, oh, no, oh, no, mijo. This is my car. I was just checking to see if the keys are in it. Says, yeah, this. Um, no, ma'am, this isn't your car. Oh, sure, sure. I dropped my car off earlier to get service today. Is it ready? Ma'am, I'm the only mechanic here today. I haven't seen any scion other than this one here. Yeah, this one's mine. Ma'am, I've never seen you before, and um, I'm pretty sure this is not your car. Sure, sure, mijo, this is my car. And um, <laughs> the mechanic goes, ma'am, this isn't your car. And he goes, oh, I just remembered my car is in the car wash, and they must be done. Uh, ma'am. I know the guy at the car wash. You can see all the cars in the car wash. There's no scions over there. Oh, oh, ah, oh, sorry. Uh, I thought this was mine. And then I come up from the other side and I said, ma'am, um, did you want the boxing gloves out of the car? Because you'll need them. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to fuck up somebody's name. I'm about to beat up Abulita. Uh, <laughs> the mechanic says, ma'am, this is probably the last scion in town you want to be doing laps around because it belongs to her. <laughs> she goes, Oy! oh, so sorry. I thought this was mine. And I was like, mm hmm. And he goes, okay, ma'am, have a nice day. To, and gives her the motion signal, like, get out of here. And so he gets into the car and opens the, well, he opens the door and gets into the car. And Nan comes running back. Abuelita comes running back and tries to, like, get in the car. She, like, sticks her head in there and is, like, trying to see what's in my car. 
And he said, ma'am, if you don't get out of here within the next two seconds, I'm calling the police. She goes, ay, yay, I was just resting. I was just resting under the tree. And he said, ma'am, there's no trees here. And then she took off. She just walked away. I was like, what the fuck? And the mechanic was like, what the fuck was that? He's like, God damn, Colton. And I said, right? I said, I, I, he said, do us a favor. Don't leave your car unlocked. And I said, I was trying to do you guys a favor if it's faster to get my car with it unlocked. And I usually leave the keys in when it's there. So now I will not be doing that. Mi <laughs> abuelita. Uh, uh, Maria tried to straight up jack, jack my car right in front of the mechanic shop. So shortly after that, the guy who delivers the parts for the shop, he's the, like the parts runner, so he just drives all over town all day picking up parts for them, comes uh, pulling into the driveway. And as he makes the turn into the driveway, there's a homeless man riding a bike. He's riding the bike real slow. And then all of a sudden, as the guy, the parts guy in the truck passes him, he begins to speed up. And then he proceeds to grab the back of the tail bed of his truck and pull himself underneath the wheel and claim that the parts guy ran him over. The fuck? Hey, homeless man. What the what? No, man, what are you doing? So a homeless man pulls himself underneath the truck to get run over and then try to put the blame on the poor parts kid. He said, oh, God, oh, God, my leg. You just ran over my leg, bro. Oh, God. And as he's rolling, rolling around in the street, myself and the mechanic, the parts guy, and then there's the car wash people. We're all standing there watching this. We saw the whole thing. And he goes, oh, my leg is broken. You fucked it up. And then he tells the parts guy, he proceeds to whisper to him. He goes, I'll give you, he said, I won't call the police if you give me $300 cash right now. <laughs> parts guy sweet sweet dude from some part of mexico barely speaks english he's like huh (laughs) he said am i gonna get fired and the shop guy was like no you're not gonna get fired we saw the whole thing and he goes oh my god he ran me over are you his boss oh my god he's like give me three hundred dollars and i won't call the police (laughs) And this mechanic guy said, he said, look, if you don't get out of here in the next three minutes, I'm calling the police on you for fraud. (laughs) And right away, all of a sudden, the dude, homeless dude rolling around the ground with his leg, he got right the fuck back up and got on that bike and took off. (laughs) Holy shit. Damn. Really, dude? Really? How are you going to do that? I mean, it was incredible. It was like out of a movie. He just waited for the back of him to pass by. And then he just grabbed the back of the truck and pulled himself under the wheel well. It's fucking bizarre. Right after Abuelita Maria tried to steal my car. This, those two must be dating or, or something. I mean, really, they're both trying to out there pulling scams on people at one o'clock on a Friday. I mean, really, <laughs> people are tired, but not that tired. OK, God damn it. Sheesh. You know, those annoying customers, you know, the stupid of the stupid customers, you know, the dumbest of the dumbest customers, it's not all customers, but all the weak, you know, those annoying customers, you know, the stupid of the stupid customers, you know, the dumbest of the dumbest customers, you know, the wackiest of the bad customers, straight up the Congress, straight from from all over the world, we got the craziest customers of the week, right here on Rambo for Radio, are you ready? It's time for Customer of the Week, 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 week. Time for Customers of the Week. First off, we had a guy who subscribes to that stupid 
foolish old wives tale that the customer is always right bullshit. Yeah. What the fuck? That ain't true. The customer is always right. Listen to that. Now you're giving them the power to be an asshole, which is exactly what happened. So black dude comes up in the store. We'll call him Prince because every time this dude comes up in the store, he always wears purple. Purple rain, purple rain. Wearing a purple hat, purple shirt. He makes his wife wear purple. Uh, What the fuck are y'all doing? Are you part of the new power generation? (laughs) Do you play keyboard for Prince? Is that Sheila E? (laughs) God, I can't stand this guy because he's such a dick every time he comes in. Everybody got to be right on it. It's telling him hello, goodbye, what's he doing, who he's seeing, what's his wife making, all this stupid shit. At a vitamin store of all places. So... Prince walks in, and he wore a raspberry boy, the kind he wore in a vitamin store. Uh, walks in, he got a stupid-ass raspberry beret on, and comes into the store and starts tapping his foot. <laughs> and nobody says anything to him. I see him out of the corner of my eye, but he's a good 30 feet away from me where I'm working. So I continue to work and I see him get huffy and puffy. So he goes into the corner of the store where the sandwiches are at and he just sees, he just turns around and takes a survey of everybody doing things. And he then proceeds to demand a manager. I need a manager. I need a manager. So somebody gets a manager and he goes, I walked in here and no one greeted me. No one greeted me. Everyone was standing around. Oh, I'm sorry, shirts versus blouses. The fuck? We're all working here. Did you need something? Usually people who need something ask. If somebody came around you, we usually are 99.9% sure we're going to greet you. The fuck? This dude wanted the purple carpet rolled out for him. (sighs) Oh, my God. Sweets. No one will die for you. (laughs) God, dog. He was so upset that people were standing around and nobody helped him. So then I had to go over there and help him because he was already so upset and nobody wanted to deal with him. And I'm like, what the fuck did I do? I don't want to talk to this asshole. So... I'm trying to talk to him, and he's being a smart ass, of course. Customer, always right. Garbage, no one greeted me. Everyone was standing around. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not your stake in a dick suck, my friend. What did you need? Otherwise, I'm going back to my regular job. This shit ain't even my job. Sandwiches ain't my shit. Somebody else's department, okay? Lucky we even got sandwiches at a vitamin store. Should be nothing but fucking vitamins in there. No vitamins, you get the fuck out. So he's going on and on and throwing a fit. So then my boss comes up. And they they give him a gift card. I'm like, oh my God. So now you're encouraging the assholery behavior. And they apologize to him. And he's like, that's right. You should. The customer's always right. I... Worked at a restaurant, my mother owned a restaurant, and I had to greet every single person that came and went in there. Nobody greeted me. Oh my, oh my God. Really, motherfucker? Because I have the complete opposite view. I, when I walk in a store, I don't care if y'all are standing around. As long as the lights are on, the, ca- the cash register works, and I can buy what I need to buy, <laughs> get out of my way. I ain't asking you shit unless I can't find it. So... <laughs> I was just trying to help him, and he was just being a smart motherfucking ass. And then they give him the gift card, and then he goes, You know, uh, this isn't the way to do business. I see that you're giving me a gift card. I will accept this. 
one could one could uh, assume that this might be a bribe that I wouldn't say anything on Yelp or anything, but I will accept this gift card. Next time I hope to be greeted. I was like, ugh. How about jog off? <laughs> and then after that had the nerve to ask that his company do business with my company after all of that shit. I sell pristine chocolates and I want to sell my chocolate here. But only if the next time I come in, I'm properly greeted. I'm like, oh my God, bitch. The fuck, what kind of dude are you that cares about being greeted? Like, what the fuck is this? Get your vitamins, get your goddamn sandwich, and get the fuck out. <sighs> I'm hoping to set up a meeting, potentially. Um, and treat it fairly, I might decide to bring my chocolates into your store. You will love my chocolate. It is the best one. And I'm like, oh, dude, I'm sorry. I don't like dick. <laughs> so you can keep your chocolate to yourself. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit, son. I was on fire. I was just like, mm hmm. Yep. No, no. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Oh, it's vagina or I don't want it. <laughs> uh, that's how gay I am. <laughs> so after Prince and Sheila E. left, shortly after that, fucking Dr. Octopus caught me. Oh, no. All I heard was, Jennifer, my friend. I was like, oh, God. Hello, Dr. Octopus. Jennifer, my friend, I need to know the best vitamin. And I was like, oh, you do. <sighs> what are you looking for? I'm looking for the best choice vitamin in here. Yes, I talk like this because I'm Dr. Octopus from Spider-Man. Like, okay, Dr. Octopus. So what is it you're trying to do? You trying to kill your mom again? Because if you don't remember from the earlier podcast, Dr. Octopus has a mom who's really sick and for whatever reason does not want to get her medical attention. He wants to use vitamins to heal her. His mom's 90 years old and he proceeds to give her just a bunch of vitamins and doesn't want to take her to the doctor. So I said, oh, wait, what's wrong with your mom today? Oh, Jennifer. I have some terrible news. My mom, she passed away. Oh, I ho oh. <laughs> damn. Sorry, Dr. Octopus. I don't know what to say. I was like, oh. I was like, thank God. The bitch was like, get the fuck away from me. I'm going into the afterlife. I'm going to go see a doctor in heaven or hell. Anywhere away from my crazy ass son. Whew. Dr. Octopus, what the fuck? R.I.P. Dr. Octopus mom. Um, if you do remember, she had the historic phone call to the store when he spent the entire day at the shop and thought that she needed to file a missing persons report because she hadn't seen him all day. Have you seen my son, Daniel? He is fat with the glasses. I need him to come home. I know he's there. Uh, Dr. Octopus, your mom's on the line. Mm, hello, ma'am. Daniel, where are you? You need to come home. It's after 8 o'clock. It's dark and I need my medication. No, ma'am, I'm not going to give you your medication. I do not want to give you what the doctors give you. I have something better. Vitamins. I'm coming home. R.I.P. Dr. Octopus' mom. Some sad shit. He said, oh, she passed away. I am here for myself. I need some vitamins. I have very high blood pressure. See, my sister, she is sick. And I do not want to take her to the doctor. I was like, oh, God. Can I, what is the rule here? Can I call the police on Dr. Octopus? Because he's basically trying to kill his whole goddamn family. He don't want to take nobody to the doctor. I feel like Dr. Octopus has his sister, Sister Octopus, like, locked up in the basement like misery or some shit and is, like, throwing a tray of, like, PB&J down there with some, like, fucking vitamin C pills. <laughs> Hello, sister. Take this vitamin C. 
and this PB and J sandwich. I will not take you to the doctor. I will make you better. No, please, Daniel, let me out of here. Doctor Octopus, I need to go. I know you're my brother, but I need to go to the doctor. I can't call my mom one for help. No, sister, Doctor Octopus knows your brother. Trust your brother. He knows what he's doing. I am a doctor, but I'm not certified. That is just what I've read online. Yes, Dr. Octopus claims to be a doctor. Even though he has not been to medical school, this is just what he has read on the internet. And has now deemed himself a doctor. (laughs) Oh, God. Oh, my God. Dr. Octopus, what the fuck? Oh, and the other thing was he wanted the raw milk. And if you know anything about raw milk, it basically says on the side of the bottle, if you're not healthy, don't drink this milk because you'll probably get sick because it's not pasteurized. They got all the good bugs and the bad bugs in there. Jennifer, my friend, I need that raw milk. My sister is sick. I need to build up her immune system. And I said, oh, uh, Dr. Octopus, uh, you don't want to buy the raw milk. To build up the immune system because it actually says if your immune system's compromised not to drink this milk because you could potentially catch something in this milk because it's not pasteurized. That could make, you know, somebody even more sick. Trust me, Jennifer. I am a doctor. Where is the raw milk? I'm like, okay. <laughs> Derelict. Uh, <laughs> he talked like the dude from Doctor Who. Exterminate. Exterminate. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Octopus, soon to be a villain on Doctor Who. <laughs> I am the doctor. Stop right there. I'm Doctor Who. I've come out of my blue telephone booth and I've come to vanish you into a time warp. I am Dr. Octopus. You will not do anything to me. I will use the power of vitamin C to fight off your time warp machine. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, Dr. Octopus, I can't, I've literally, he, he kept me one time for almost two hours talking about absolutely fucking nothing. Some shit that he read online wrong and I had to prove him right because he refused to leave until I would either agree with him or prove that he was wrong. So we have had a sordid past to a point where I've literally put up the hand and said, not today, Satan, not today, Dr. Octopus. I really have to do my job today. I got to talk to you later. (laughs) I've had to put up the hand. I'm like, bro, I can't. (laughs) There are other customers here. I got to help. I got to get this store clean and I got to go home to my fucking dogs. Okay. I have a life and it's not helping you. I might get paid to help you, but that's for like 20 minutes. And then you got to go, not two hours. You got to go, Dr. Octopus. So, oh, so I will just, uh, after this lovely Dr. Octopus skit, I will just say, R.I.P. Dr. Octopus Mom. Uh, rest in peace, Dr. Octopus Mom. So, once again, I have found myself in hot water with my African friends. <sighs> Another one who came in the store with the full on dashiki. African crisscross colors pending on. God, that was just straight off coming to America. Prince, Prince Zamunda's, Prince Zamunda's sister, Mrs. Zamunda, fucking coming in the store looking for hormones, which you gotta go to a doctor for. We have hormone replacements, but not hormones. And of course, right away, we get into an argument because you just know me, fam. I am black, but I is American black. And for whatever reason, African black versus American black, we got beef. African black, fresh off the boat, somehow think they are better than American black. This always happens. I don't know how this happens. Well, at least it happens to me anyway, especially at my work. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm like, oh no. It's Ricky's sister. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me, my sister. Help me. Oh my god. Okay, I'm like, please just be positive, be positive, be positive. Maybe it's not a dumb question. Maybe it's not a stupid question. I need you to help me find the hormones you make here. 
I'm like, oh, but we don't actually make hormones here. Um, you got to go to the doctor. The doctor's offices are like uh, about two, three blocks down, four miles from here, roughly. Not even that, two miles. Max. No, no, no. I bought it here before. You have the hormones. I'm like, okay, well, we have hormone alternatives. Show me, show me. So I show uh, Ricky's sister and the fucking hormones that, and I said, well, we don't make them here. It has the store label on it, but we don't actually make them here. Um, this is not it. It is made by you, your company, the hormones. And I said, no, ma'am. We only have hormone replacement creams here. We don't have hormones. No, I bought it here before. You're not listening. And then uh, the hairs on the back of my neck. The gay rage was coming. And I was like, oh my God. Yell at me one more time in that goofy ass dashiki. You jackass. <laughs> I was losing it. I was like, okay, motherfucker. We can go shirts versus blouses right now. You already got the blouse on, and I can just wear the shirt. I was ready to go. I was like, okay, bitch. So then I went, ma'am, this is made by us. Hormone replacement cream. We don't sell hormones here. You got to go to the doctor. And then she said, oh, oh. Never mind, never mind. I go somewhere else. He's like, Bye. Bye, Felipe. Bye, Felicia. Bye bye, Mija. Adios. Whew. I was done with that. I was like, Oh, now you're going to get a crazy ass tone. Now you're coming with the Afrikaans and you're going to get a crazy ass tone with me. Whew. Man, I had to assert my blackness very quickly into that conversation. I was like, ma'am, hell no. <laughs> Don't know who you think you are, but I know who I am. And I fucking work here. And I'm telling you, we ain't got what you're talking about. You get a fuck out of here. <laughs> Jog off. So she storms out of there, and I was just about done. I said, God, I cannot handle this shit anymore. Some current events. Good news, everybody. Good news, everybody. Ellis Mania 15 is happening early. That's right, folks. It's happening in August instead of October. The fuck? Don't you know I got a birthday and summer to celebrate? How the fuck am I supposed to train in this hot-ass weather? (sighs) I thought I was just training so I could get the body oddy that I've always wanted. So I could get the hotties with the bodies that I've always wanted. I thought I was just training to be on Team Skinny Mini and not really even looking for a fight. When at Sully22 on Instagram, thought it would be a good idea to call me out. Let me explain something to you at Sully22. You may have been the heroic pilot that saved all those people from crashing into Times Square and landed the plane in the Hudson River. But let me tell you something. Come August 25th, if Ellis lets this fight happen, No one will be able to save you from drowning in my fists at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas at the joint. (laughs) Called me out and it's got me riled up and she will get the full wrath of Rambo Radio. She does not want none. This is Big Cunt Tree. At 
that Sully 2 2 is not. The Fury of a Thousand Suns will be unleashed upon at Sully 2 2 if Ellis allows this fight to happen. Your best bet at Sully 2 2 is to pray that Ellis does not let this fight happen for your safety. Because I promised, I promise you, when you call after champ, you gonna get the champ. The champ is coming for you. Turn that bomb off. Buy your tickets now. Do not miss this event. And I'm telling you, if I'm fighting, this will probably be the last time I fight. I'm not too sure if there's any opponents left for me out there. Red Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas on August 25th. And if I'm fighting, you better be there. You better be there to watch me beat up my dear friend at Sully 2-2. Sam, I love you to death. However, once that bell rings, it's on like Donkey Kong. And lastly, before I go, my girl... Ariana Grande and Mac Miller broke up, which means Ariana Grande is single. Mola Mami, Mucho Gusto. That's right, the donut liquor is single. <laughs> oh, the little Polly Pocket Ariana Grande. Who has an incredible voice, by the way. Let me just say, she's, she's a very good singer, by the way. Easy on the eyes, I won't lie. Uh, is she singing? Anybody? Hello? You can eat. You don't bring my line no more. Whoa, whoa. You don't make it ring, 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 ring. I can take it on the low. Whoa, whoa. You don't make it ring, 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 ring. <laughs> That's right. Ariana, if you're listening to Rambo for Radio, you can ring my line. I'm only one call away. <laughs> God, dog, she is steamy. And she's like four foot nothing, which is like, oh, keeper status. If I can pick you up and scoop you in my pocket, you're, you're, you're mine. <laughs> God, dog. Um, no. I had a situation where the lady, real quick about the ladies before I go. Can y'all, now that summer is approaching, can y'all stop wearing the low tops? I'm trying to control myself, but I lost, I lost my composure the other day. A female with the largest boobs I've ever seen in my life. And they were like four feet, not even four feet. They were like two feet away from my face. And I couldn't stop looking. God, could you not? I I practice as much self-control as possible, but if they're just spilling out, then what the fuck are we doing here? Are we boning or not? <laughs> and on that note, I've got to go. It is time for bed. It is breakfast hours in London. It is almost business hours in New York it's time for me to get busy and tackle the day and so should you turn this shit off get to the gym like I'm going because I got a beat up at Sully 2-2 that's right, send her all the hate mail you want don't send her hate mail I love her, she's cool but once that bell rings you know, it's time Ramble open, coming out big country, it's coming for that win it's time for you to call me Champ Champ, as I will have not one but two belts 
at the end of Ellis Mania. Ellis Mania 14 champ, Ellis Mania 15 champ, if the wing gives it a go. So you better be ready. I'm on standby. I'm training until I hear the no. Until I hear no, it's a go. All systems go. And now I will let you go. Go tackle your day, your night, your family, your boyfriend dick, your husband's dick, whatever the fuck, or your lady's vagina, or somebody's vagina, or penis, or whatever y'all do. Well, do it in the name of love. Set out a goal. Tackle it. Don't be afraid. Commit. Go do it. Fulfill your dreams. And on that note, this... Is Rambo Radio. I'm out.